provide diplomatic outreach to other cities uh, represent Tucson, set a vision. And as a, as a Green Party mayor, what vision would you set? Ah, the Green Party has 10 key values that we follow. Um, typically, we know that Democrats support big government. We also understand that Republicans are aligned with big business. Well, that leaves 80 to 90 percent of the population out there underrepresented. That's who we want to speak for. We want to connect with the regular people. We want to represent the unheard voices and give them a seat at the table. Well, Dave, as mayor, <laughs> uh, how would you bring in the agenda of the Greens? Well, um, the Greens have two important things to remember. The Greens have no corporate funding, and we have 10 key values. Our 10 key values guides us with our agenda. Uh, unlike um, uh, the independents, which seems to be a large voting group, we actually stand for something. So our agenda in the Green Party has to do with our 10 key values. Um, there's 80 uh, Green Parties nation or around the world, and four of our 10 key values are common with all Green Parties. Grassroots democracy, social justice, ecological wisdom, and nonviolence. So what I would bring to the mayor's office with is a breath, of, a breath of fresh air of values that sustain Tucsonans for the future. We believe very strongly, and I do, and I know Mary shares, shares this point with me, that Tucson's future is based upon our water. And the water issue is my number one priority with our future. Mary, I was reading today about a water doomsday scenarios. What about the Colorado River not giving us the water that we need? What would you do as mayor? Well, what I would do as mayor is institute a relocalization program. What I would like to see is the city of Tucson champion neighborhoods. We all know that the vacancy rates around town have skyrocketed. There, there are all sorts of dormant properties that are available that are sitting unused. If the city could devise a way to return those spaces to the neighborhoods, to the communities for use, we could operate nonprofits out of those spaces. Watershed Management Group, under the direction of Catlow and Lisa Shippick, has done a tremendous job raising awareness. And we could introduce neighbor helping neighbor programs to provide installation of uh, rain gutters, water catchment systems, and make better use of the limited amount of water that we have, and raise consciousness across the city of how water is wasted. And I do think that our water department has a good education program. It just needs to get out. It just needs to be heard by more people and for everybody to take it seriously and adopt that personal responsibility. One of the 10 key values is personal as well as global responsibility. And I think that those um, core values should show through on whatever we do. Well, Dave, let me ask you about the global warming crisis and how would you as mayor help create a carbon, a lower carbon situation here? Well, I, uh, th the fact is that climate change, peak oil, and the collapsing economy are a triumphant of collapse of our empire. And I believe very strongly that our, our future is based upon, like Mary says, in relocalization. And the way we do that is establishing what our carrying capacity. With regards to water, we know that the aquifer has dropped 300 feet in the last 80 years. And our development plan has been based upon water that received in the CAP, or the Central Arizona Project, for rapid development of the city. And that's not sustainable. 
as long as that water table continues to drop below um, uh, sustainability records, we as a future, we as a community do not have a future. So the future of Tucson dealing with, with catastrophic climate change everywhere else is to focus in on what our carrying capacity is, the community is, and, and use the, the water table as our guidance for the future. One of the key values of the Green Party is creating a nonviolent regime. How do we yes. go about doing that in a city that the main employer is Raytheon and another employer is Davis Monthan Air Force Base? I'll have both of you answer that. Mary, would you go first? Oh, certainly, and, and thank you for the opportunity. Um, you're right. That's troublesome. And the people who work at Raytheon, the people who work at Davis Monthan, wonderful people, hardworking, decent, um, members of our community. I don't want to take their jobs away from them. A lot of people think that the Greens are um, out to uh, take jobs away from military industrial complex. Well, from that goal, yes, yes, I would. I would like to repurpose Raytheon. I think that we could retool that structure, that, that whole empire there, into something like light rail, more life-affirming rather than life-destroying um, production. So I think that we could do that. Uh, I mentioned earlier those neighborhood centers making use of our dormant space. Another group that I would put in there is uh, the Green Retrofit Co-op. I did some volunteer work with them for a while, and I know firsthand what they can accomplish. They bring neighbors together to provide energy saving retrofits to our aging housing inventory. We have houses out there that just leak energy. And we can do simple things together, things like replacing windows, adding weatherization, putting in insulation that would help us immediately save on our energy bill as well as employ people and give them meaningful work to do. It would retain that skill set of traits that Dave is so familiar with. What we're finding is that our young people going out seeking work now have very limited options. They can go into the military and make uh, warfare their source of income, but we should give them traits. We should give them a skill base that they feel best utilizes their human potential. Um, uh, I have similar views. My um, background is I'm a veteran and I'm an active member of Veterans for Peace. Uh, as a member of Vietnam Veterans of America, I was involved with starting an event called Nam Jam that was welcoming veterans home who were for the most part neglected. And that sustained the veteran community for quite a while. But we have a new generation of veterans that need our services. Uh, I do think that the military industrial complex has gotten far too big. And our income in Tucson, based upon uh, that source of energy, is, is not setting the message that Tucsonans believe in peace. And I believe that Tucsonans uh, would much rather have engineering skills that go to a sustainable future rather than weapons of mass destruction. I believe that the only option a lot of young people who are engineers have is with Raytheon. So I also would encourage that uh, the, the community look at the resources it has and encourage those who are engaged in the military industrial complex to do two things, bring our troops home and retool and support this community for a future that's sustainable in a world that's changing rapidly. Oh, well, both of you want peace. <laughs> yes, we do. And in fact, um, Dave's organization, Veterans for Peace, works very closely with an organization I belong to, Code Pink Women for Peace, um, at, at the national level as well as the local level. We are paired in our commitment to offer Tucsonans a uh, more peaceful future, something that they feel good about. 
You know, I um, served during the Vietnam era, and I felt very compelled to serve. I enlisted when most of my peers were drafted to got in the military. And I, I, I believe that we're better served when our community has investment. And I, I personally feel that everyone has a right to serve, but it doesn't have to be in the military. I think there's so many things that we can do. During the Great Depression, what brought us out of it was work projects that got mm -hmm. citizens involved. Uh, we need so much uh, assistance in community assets and, and educating the elderly, helping with uh, police resources, conservation, elderly care, health care. There is so many ways in which one could serve and get the benefit uh, of providing service for the greater good rather than just a military component. Yes. How do you propose we would pay for this, like even Access Tucson, which is such an asset to the community, uh, there doesn't seem to be money for that. What do, you, what do we do about the money problem? Do you want to take this one first, Dave, or do you want me to? Uh, I'll be glad to. Um, you know, I personally have four goals for the economic viability of Tucson. And um, I believe strongly that we should be a center for health and education. We have wonderful resources, many of good people in, in those fields to draw upon for our future. The other is we have a lot of retired people. So one of our economic engines is people who come here for their retirement years. And the third is, is is tourism. Tucson traditionally has been a great tourism town. And the fourth pillar of my economic engine is living wage service industry. So that people who work for a living, whether you're serving a, a drink at a bar or whether you're uh, servicing someone's dental needs as a dentist, servicing in the community should be a living wage job. So our, our plan in relocalization has to do with living within our carrying capacities, but encouraging local businesses. So our support would be to stop giving resources to corporations that have a form of that profit, leaving in a form of profit outside of the community, but encourage and in, in, in institute organizations or not necessarily instituting organizations but allowing for living wage jobs in the service industry for local businesses so the dollars that we spend go into spending on people who already live here and who will spend their dollars here yes we talk about where's the money going to come from i'd like to say where's the money gone if we look at the growing division between the haves and the have-nots we know that there's money. We know that it's, it's circulating around um, our economy, our system. But what happens with the current system is low-level workers are exploited. And the people at the very top, the top 1%, the top 10%, they are, um, I, I would say, obscenely <laughs> uh, compensated for their services. When I think that every day we wake up with the same 24 hours ahead of us, the same human physical needs, but just rolling out of bed, some people are already making money because they've got money in the bank and it's earning them interest and they've got it invested in dividends and the money is making them money. It's not their human spirit, their energy, their um, mental capacity. It has nothing to do with who they are. It's the position in society that they occupy. And for too long, we have allowed the elite, the, the ones who make our laws, who, who govern us, to um, upend the balance so that people at the lower end are working two and three jobs, they're scrambling, trying to make their bills, they don't have time to consider how to approach the system holistically. They're worried about their little piece of the pie. Well, I think that we can change that. I think that if we empower communities and neighbors and we disempower the corporations and the um, top wage earners, that our, our city 
would recognize tremendous benefits. We've had this terrible shootout here in Tucson with uh, the G Gabby Guilford seriously wounded. What is your position on crime and gun control, both of you? Um, uh, I, Mary and I both went to a, a memorial for a young Marine who was shot by the SWAT team. And I, I share a concern in the community for a, a police state in which we're far overusing the SWAT and military type of police tactics in our community. Uh, a number of years ago, there was a young boy who was shot in the eye by a beanbag for the so-called riots on 4th Avenue. And since then, I've seen a steady buildup of, of SWAT actions. And um, there was a group of people here called Oath Takers. These are veterans and military that's taken an oath on the Constitution to defend the Constitution. It's very clear that this Marine being served a search warrant doesn't constitute a death sentence. And what we have seen in terms of military, uh, militarization of our police force is a little concerning to me. I would much rather go back to what we had planned on a number of years ago in this community with community-based policing, on which we had uh, geo-based policing that got to know our neighborhoods. Uh, I'm activist in the Neighborhood Association, have been for a number of years. And when the neighbors meet with the police command on a regular basis, we can talk about crime in the neighborhood before it gets to the point that we have to have SWAT officers enforcing uh, this very difficult uh, sentencing. Uh, uh, th this, this Marine being killed is very troubling for a lot of people, not just uh, community, but people who've taken that oath, as I did when I enlisted in the Army, to defend the Constitution with my life. That's very serious. And those who take that commitment do not want it squandered by individuals and organizations within the police department um, executing that right. Uh, last week in Compton, California, uh, the U.S. Education Department executed a SWAT raid on an individual's house. This, um, this concerns me, Libby. So my focus again is to bring Tucson's, uh, we'll dust off that, that plan for community-based policing that we modeled uh, when Doug Smith was hired as our chief police. When uh, Chief Villasenor and I worked on that plan, um, I think we need to go back to that and bring uh, the, the police and the neighborhood together to solve those crimes together and not wait for it to escalate. And following that January 8th shooting at the Safeway where Gabrielle Giffords was wounded and so many others lost their lives, um, my response w was uh, horrified. I, I was so appalled by that level of violence and that disconnection, how you could visit such misery on other human beings. Um, whenever I get frustrated, I get busy. So what I did was organize a press conference for peace that we held on January 11th, 2011. So, <laughs> 1-11-11. Eleven. Um, and we brought together 18 speakers from various peace and social justice groups here in Tucson. Now, if we can marshal that many people in such a short time, that tells me that we have a deep well of desire for peace, for finding alternatives to violence. I do believe that peace starts individually, that we need to watch our words and actions engage civilly and respectfully. That's why I am so delighted to be running with Dave um, I, I don't consider Dave an opponent. We're partners. Um, we both represent the Green Party. We're offering the voters a distinct difference in who you want to carry forward the message. But we're both very committed to peace, to uh, improving neighborhoods and community connections. And as far as gun control, I've never owned a gun in my life. I 
really object to firearms. I, I think that their original intent was to protect the home, to provide food. Um, those needs are currently met in other ways. And I, <clears throat> I really appreciate that people out in the community do own guns and they're willing to protect others who don't because then whether it's the overzealous police or whether it's the criminal element intent on um, crime, they don't know coming through the door who's going to have guns and who doesn't. I don't have a gun. I don't like guns. I would get rid of all guns, but I realize that it is diversity that is our strength and not everyone shares my opinion. I respect theirs. Um, I, I wouldn't agree to carry a gun to please them just as I'm not going to strip them of their firearms because that's my wish. I don't think that we need the semi-automatics, the um, Uzis and, and the AK-47s. I, I would push for peace. You know, the best thing we can do for peace is create community. And what yes. we have in this community often throughout the year is the community coming together. Tonight, yes. uh, downtown Saturday night is happening. And as I see the crowds growing in the downtown area, as I remember as a child growing up here, Tucsonans came to downtown for that vibrancy. And to see the vibrancy of our community come together for the street fair, for the folk festival, we really are a loving and affirming community. And the best thing we can do for violence is to continue doing those community things and let people know that we have a safe and wonderful downtown that's enjoyed by thousands. And those of you who've been sitting at home wondering if it's safe, come on down yes. and enjoy it, it is. We have a wonderful city and we have a bright future, particularly because we have the resources here to sustain here for Tucsonans. And if I could piggyback on that for just a minute, um, what Dave says about community is very true. The extensive studies that I've done at the University of Arizona, at George Washington University, at other institutions, shows overwhelmingly that the problems develop when we separate into us and them, mm -hmm. when we draw that boundary between us and other, that's when violence is seeded. Because if you think of the other person as opposite of you, as not connected, you can hurt them, harm them. But um, one thing that a, a mutual friend of ours, Dave Ewald, shared early on is this idea that regardless of whether you believe in evolution or in creationism. We're just about out of time. Okay. <laughs> that we all share that same spark of human life. We are connected. If you go back in our ancestry, somewhere it is shared, and we need to remember that and respect it. Dave? Last word. Hey, peace and love and come down down to downtown tonight. And if